Hi guys, I'm Neil Ball from AS CAD Services. I'm going to show you something now that I've been playing with. It was either that or watch EastEnders, so I thought I'd do this instead. Um, it's a tool that those who do door headers, window headers, that sort of thing, they might find this quite useful. Um, I'm going to do a bit of layout in a minute just to get us, get us going. So let's go to objects. Now I could use double channel back to back tool, but I'm not, I'm just going to draw a couple of channels. I'm going to start at zero, zero. I make this 1500 long. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to position this. So I'm going to flip it and I'm just going to put this, the uh, system line there. Get it right eventually. There's only nine to choose from. I can get it wrong eight times. And we give this a name. I'm just going to call this a beam. Just good practice. Remember this model rolls. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to copy it from here out 100 mil. Now remembering that the system line retains its position. When I reposition the beam, I'm going to flip the beam there. Look. I know this is 100 mil spacing. Uh, let me just put this into realistic view, see so what's going on there. It is look. So two beams back to back. You'll recognise this. So as I said, if you do headers, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a spacer tube in between, and I'm going to go from this node to this node. A bit large, probably. So we're going to change this to something a bit more realistic. Twenty-one by three point two, and position centre. Now, you might have a model role for this. I'm not going to bother looking for it. I'm just going to call it a beam. You notice I didn't uh, fill out the model role for this beam because it was a copy and rotate. If I go into this, you'll see it retained the model role from the first beam. So remember that if you copy things, rotate things, copy and rotate, copy and move, whatever, <coughs> it's going to retain some of the properties. I'm going to move this. And notice, I'm not going to go looking for the end, I'm just going to click here. The move is relative position, so you can see wherever I move the cursor, the bit of tube is going to move relative to that. I'm going to move this along 75mm. There it is. So we can see there's our spacer tube, there's our two bits of uh, channel. I'm going to go into 2D wireframe for this next bit so you can see what's going on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate my UCS and I'm going to rotate it about the X axis. There it is. So I'm looking straight down the barrel of the gun from this end. And to bolt these together, you'll notice I'm, I'm just going to switch this a minute. The default would be bolts, but I'm actually going to switch this to anchors. And I'm going to use a single point rectangular center point there to position the anchors and what I'm going to do I'm going to join all three of these together and I'm going to click on that center point and it's put the default holding down bolts in four off that's a default in the system you can actually change that if you go into management tools but uh, there you go I want one one so that gives me the single bolt still a bit vicious holding that together so I'm going to change the definition and the definition I'm going to use is my new one and here it is BZP studding there and at the moment is 20 mil diameter 8.8 .8 studding so I'm going to change this to a 12 mil stud and it's 300 mil long now there's a bit of a compromise here if I change this from 300 to 100 you can see there's no stud protruding from the end nut that tells me that the stud as it is is too short because what I've done, I haven't got infinite lengths of stud. The stud goes up in increments because what I don't want to happen is the stud to be some strange length, 95.75 and my guys having to chop a load of 95.75 stud. So what I've done, I've used lengths and I've rounded these. So let's try 120 is no good to me. Let's try 140. And let's try 160. Right, now you can see I've got stud protruding. Because I've got stud protruding, the 160 is the length of the stud to join these two pieces together. And there it is. Okay, now I can obviously, I could copy this along. I'd only draw one, I copy it. And because this is stud, this actually shows, let's save this a minute. So let's save as uh, BZP test. 
Let's overwrite that one. Okay, there it is. And if I were to number the model, I always use a single part number for standalone parts equals assembly number. I start at 100, I start at 10. That's just me. You can start at whatever you like. I'm going to go OK. We've numbered this. OK, so then if I go to the BOM templates and I have a look at UK bolt and anchor list. We can see here, look, M12 grade 8.8 .8 BZP studding, two hex nuts and two flat washers. So because this is actually an anchor, it features in the bolts and anchors list. And obviously there's more than one anchor in this in the uh, in the tool so we can see look I've gone 8 to 30 mil on the studding and the lengths depending obviously on the size various lengths 8.8 .8 and the anchor assembly you need to do a little bit of work and I mean a little bit if I go into management tools and we go into anchors just let this load up a second there we go and if I go into BZP studying and I filter this, I don't know if you realize that these little squares are filters. If I take the filter off of this, for instance, I've got all these sizes. If I put the filter on, these are just the ones that I've done. So if I go to a 10 mil and I go to set, you can see that the assembly name is studying. I don't think this is in the system, you'd have to create this, but it's a simple job to do that. And if you want to copy of this and let have it for free, I'll send you a little FAQ, how to make those changes in management tools, but basically you import the studying and refer to this video and away it goes. So that's it guys. If anybody wants it, they can contact me. Um, drop me an email at uh, neil, spelled N-I-A-L, strangely, N-I-A-L dot ball, B-A-L-L, -L, at ASCAD services. .co.uk and what I'll do, I'll send you a zipped up file so you can import this into your uh, advanced deal. 2017 this is guys, um, may work on 2016, I haven't tried it, I couldn't really say, but uh, if anybody wants it, as I said, drop me an email, I'll send you a zip file and I'll send you a little FAQ on how to set this up, but it's going to save you lots of work, saves you putting a bit of bar in and then putting in some special parts for the nuts and washers so there it is um free from ascad services as i said drop me an email and i'll whisk one over to you and uh happy days good luck with that and until next time have a good evening and i'll speak to you again